From the depths of my heart, thank you for loving and supporting my family. Your messages, phone calls, flowers, food, prayers were all beyond considerate. For those of you who didn't know what to say or how to say it, I felt your pain and I understand your silence and your distance. I saw my brother as a student for life. And of all the titles I hold, student is the one I value most. I study, practice, and teach Eastern modalities for health and healing of the body, mind, and the breath. My brother, too, was fascinated with the East and what it has to offer for the betterment of our world. In the Eastern world, white is worn to funerals as a celebration of life, as a way to attract the light and dispel the darkness. I may call Athens, Ohio my home, or even Columbus, Ohio my home, but if I'm truly honest with myself, home is back with our Creator. Tonight, I'm celebrating that my brother is finally home. Planet Earth can be positively beautiful, but it does present obstacles and challenges. Tonight, I celebrate that my brother is finally home with our creator, where I know negativity never exists. I have a lot to share with you on the topic of my brother. There is so very much to celebrate regarding his past life, but I'm saving the majority of my expressions for his funeral tomorrow morning. Here now, I would like to offer you a poem gifted to me by my Indian yoga teacher, Indu and slightly modified by myself to make it most appropriate for this occasion. In chaos, may you find rhythm. In confusion, may you find clarity. The choices will be many. May you make the ones that uplift, not just you, but many. May your minds be filled with pleasantness. May your eyes be filled with insight. May your ears ring in voices of harmony. May your speech add purpose in voice of reason. May your hearts blossom. May your hands offer help in charity. May your feet move towards the truth. May your actions respect our mother nature. May your actions add goodness to our community. May your actions infuse peace unto your soul. I invite you to close your eyes to enjoy a guided white light meditation. This meditation helps to unlock our own natural healing abilities. It's uplifting and increases our overall well-being. 
Find your comfortable seated position. In a perfect world, your legs should not be crossed. Your feet should be grounded completely. Move the meat of your tush to the sides to ground your sit bones into your chair. You roll your shoulders back and down. You allow your head to float up like a balloon. You feel supported in the earth lifted in the spine. Draw your attention inward to focus on your breath. Inhale to the count of six and exhale to the count of six. In a perfect world, it's all through your nose. Use your imagination and notice a stream of pure white light, healing energy flowing down from the universe and into the crown on your head. A glorious waterfall of pure, unconditional love, well-being, vitality and joy, straight from the core of our universe, flows into your being and shines like billions of diamonds, reflecting all the colors of the rainbow, each color carrying a specific ray of nourishment to all of the levels of your being. Breathe this white diamond light down into, within, through, and all around your heart. Visualize your heart expanding as a brilliant sphere of white healing energy radiating out in all directions. On your exhalation, release everything within you that has concealed love. Use your strength and your power to send white light healing energy to all of humanity through your heart center. See yourself as the perfect unity of light and of love.
Slowly become aware of your body within this space. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Inhale to the count of six and exhale to the count of six. We'll be joining here this evening until 9 p.m. We're going to reconvene tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. to start Tyler's funeral. Immediate family are welcome to arrive at 8. Above all, thank you for being here with us. I know without a shadow of a doubt that Tyler feels blessed by your presence here tonight and in his past life. <clears throat> Namaste is a traditional and profound salutation in India, meaning that the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Well, good morning. I want to welcome you on this uh, special but somber occasion as we celebrate the life of Tyler, Scott, Smith, Ty, as many of you called him as well. I just want to let you know my deepest and sincere sympathy go out to all of you and especially to family who have gathered here, some who are able to be here today and some who are not able to, but your loss and pain is unimaginable. And we want to take some time today to slow down, to remember and to celebrate Tyler's life. We're going to hear some memories shared by Maggie in just a little bit. And I'm sure we will laugh and we will cry in this moment and the days ahead as we remember good times and challenging times. But we're going to lean into each other for comfort. And one reason we gather here today, too, is that we gather and we turn to our Creator, to God's Spirit for healing and for hope. While we are at a loss, Tyler's death is not a surprise to God. God is not shaken. And that's why we can find strength and refuge in God. Let's begin this time together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just pause in this moment. We just want to acknowledge your presence here with us. We want to acknowledge your spirit, which comes and to give comfort and to bring peace and to give us strength. And Father, we just ask your presence in these moments with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said this morning, we're going to take some time to remember Tyler, to lean into each other, and to turn to God for his comfort and his peace. And while we're here, we're mixed with emotions. Whenever we remember a life, there's times of sadness, grief, pain, and sorrow. But there's also laughter and joy and recalling special memories together. And the strongest emotion that we carry is love. And that's what brings us together. And a phrase I'm going to say now and even repeat later is, we hurt so much because we love so deeply. I think as we think about our pain, it's a reminder of the love that we have, and, and that's why these moments are especially difficult. At this time, I'm going to ask Maggie to share some memories and come and let us hear those. Come on up, Maggie. For those who attended the viewing last night, there'll be a touch of repetition in what I have to say, but I always enjoy hearing something really important more than once as it tends to penetrate our being on a, a deeper level. So for that, I won't lose sleep over my repetition. From the depths of my heart, thank you for loving and supporting my family. Your messages, phone calls, flowers, plants, wind chimes, food, a warm blanket, and prayers were all beyond helpful. For those who didn't know what to do, what to say, or how to say it, I felt your pain, and I understand your silence, and I understand your distance. For those who chose to travel, you'll never fully understand how fortunate we have been to have your physical company and your affection. I have always seen my brother as a student for life, and of all the titles I hold, student is the one I value most. I study, practice, and teach Eastern modalities for health and healing 
of the body, mind, and breath. My brother too was fascinated with what the East has to offer for the betterment of our world. In the Eastern world, white is worn to funerals as a celebration of life, as a way to attract the light and dispel the darkness. I may call Athens, Ohio my home, or even Worthington, Ohio my home, but if I'm truly honest with myself and others, home is back with our creator. Today I'm celebrating that my brother is finally home. Planet Earth can be positively enchanting, but it does present obstacles and challenges. Today I celebrate that my brother is finally home with our creator, where I know negativity does not exist. Focusing on light within, I desire to share the greatest lessons my brother has provided to me. If you learn to listen deeply with a single pointed focus, you will find everyone and everything to be your teacher. Around 25 years ago, my brother and I were the bestest of friends. He was my shadow. I admired his quiet persona. He had a natural meditative mind, seeming to concentrate on and contemplate everything. He would speak if spoken to, but other than that, he truly enjoyed silence. 25 years ago, I was his opposite. And now I study, practice, and teach the art and the science of concentration, contemplation, and silence. Tyler was my first teacher on those three pillars of yoga from the Eastern world. In my darkest hour, Tyler was present and he taught me how to hope and how to pray in a way that resonated with my soul. Today, I'm one of the most optimistic individuals I've ever known and prayer is weaved into the fabric of each and every day. I have Tyler to thank for that reality. In his darkest hour, we all have them if we're truly honest with ourselves and others. He taught me how to stand strong as an oak tree, how to say what I mean and mean what I say. Today, I'm one of the strongest and most honest individuals I've ever met. And two, Tyler, I have to thank for that reality. Through Tyler's existence, I've seen countless moments of unconditional love. Some unfortunately go a lifetime without ever seeing one moment of unconditional love. Because of Tyler, I am blessed to know what unconditional love looks like on numerous occasions. I ask a favor of you this evening. Please light a candle in Tyler's name gaze into the flame of that candle for a duration of four to 31 minutes. Should your eyes get tired, close them and enjoy the internal flame at the space between your eyebrows. While sitting in silence with the flame of your candle, concentrate and contemplate the greatest lesson Tyler's life has provided to you when that lesson has been discovered, use your imagination and place that lesson within the cave of your heart, the heart of your heart, the location that is said to house your soul. And please choose to carry that lesson with you for eternity as a way to better the evolution of your spirit and ensure that Tyler did not live in vain. I know without a shadow of a doubt that Tyler feels blessed by your presence here, today, and in this past life. Friday, January 6th, on a very powerful full moon, representing prosperity and new beginnings, a doorway presented to lead him back home. 
ancient wisdom from the eastern parts of our world, note that doorways, home, are only presented when a life mission has been complete. It's only natural to feel elements of sadness for our loss, but I challenge you to find happiness in his gain. He's finally home, at peace with our creator, where negativity does not need be defined as it does not exist. His mission here on planet Earth has been accomplished. We'll be following each other in procession to Union Cemetery. After our time at the burial ground, you're invited back to my parents' home for a celebration of life. The address for navigation is on the back and bottom of your program. Please drive carefully, and I thank you for being here with us. Namaste is a traditional and profound salutation in India, meaning that the light in me honors and sees the light in you. Namaste. Thank you, Maggie. Your brother has had a big impact on your life, and he's had a big impact on so many lives, and his light does continue to shine through each and every one of you. Tyler's mom, Bev, shared some memories and some thoughts with me, and I want to share just a few of those here with you as well. She said, Tyler was very spiritual and spent countless hours reading the Bible. He and I were baptized together in my mother's church in Shinston, West Virginia, several years ago. You were telling me a little bit about that earlier. He had a great life growing up. And in this moment, too, we remember his dad, Scott Smith, who passed away on November 4th, 2014. Bev said she helped his dad's mother, Marjorie, Tyler's grandmother, for several more years before her passing several years ago, and he was very close to her. Tyler's favorite vacations were beach trips and anything involving family functions. His favorite holidays were Christmas and the 4th of July. He loved to camp out as well. He loved his computer and anything electronic, apparently, too. <laughs> I'm sure he spent lots of hours doing that. As we've been hearing, he has a very sweet spirit. She said, Tyler, it was very sweet to everyone. He was very considerate and had an infectious laugh. He was always helping those less fortunate and donated money to various churches as well. A scripture that Bev shared is Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7. I think it's a beautiful scripture for us to hold on to today. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I think it's that peace of God that we long for, a peace that surpasses the understanding that in these situations, we can still have peace. The poem that Bev shared with me, I'll share with you now. It says, when I am gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with too many tears, but be thankful we had so many good years. I gave you my love, and you can only guess how much you've given me in happiness. I thank you for the love that you have shown, but now it is time I traveled on alone. So grieve for me a while, if you grieve you must, then let your grief be comforted by trust. It is only for a while that we must part, so treasure the memories within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. And if you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I will be near. And if you listen with your heart, you'll hear. All my love around you soft and clear. And then, when you come this way alone, I'll greet you with a smile and a welcome home. When we hear the stories from one another, and even this morning, and memories, and poems, and scriptures, of course, our heart aches. We feel many emotions, and many of us are just not ready to say goodbye. We experience deep sadness, grief, and pain. I'm sure we even experience anger at God. We might experience confusion. How can this happen? We have questions and struggles. How could he allow him to die so young, only 33 years old, with so much life still ahead as we imagine? Is God real? Does he even exist? These are questions, these are struggles, and God is not afraid of our questions and our struggles. But as we reflect on Tyler's life and death, and even our own in these moments when we're here, it's important that I want to share a few things with you, words of comfort, strength, 
and hope. And as the Bible reminds us, good news. First, let me speak to your sadness and grief and pain at losing Tyler. As I said earlier, we hurt so much because we loved so deeply. The depth of our pain is directly proportional to the depth of our love. I'm reminded of a passage in scripture where we read the shortest scripture in all of the Bible, and it's at the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus' friend. And it simply says, Jesus wept. And I think we just remember that moment, that emotion runs deep, especially at times of loss and death. Our tears are a gift of God's healing, so let them flow. The Bible tells us that God draws near to the brokenhearted. The Bible says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. That comfort comes from God, and that comfort comes from each other. But the Bible also reminds us that we do not grieve like those who have no hope, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that we have a hope of eternal life, that we have a hope that this isn't all there is, that we have a hope of freedom from pain and struggle. We will see him again. We will be reunited. Why? Because I know that Tyler declared his faith in Christ at his baptism. Baptism is the symbol of dying to our old life and being raised to a new life, dying to our old life in Christ and being raised to the new hope that he has conquered death, that death is not the end, that it is a continuation into the eternal life. And when we put our life in Jesus' hands, we experience that freedom. But it also doesn't mean we don't have life without struggle. Struggle is real. Life is hard. Challenges are there. There's a struggle between good and evil, light and dark, and we experience it. As many say, the struggle is real. But I love what John 10.10 10 says, the promise of Jesus. He says, the thief comes to seek, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life to the fullest, to find that fullness of life in Christ. And he can say that because he is life himself. He is life itself. And he is in the struggle with us. Jesus is walking alongside of us, and we can take great comfort in that. The serenity prayer says this, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace, trusting that God will make all things right if I surrender to his will. Romans 8, 28, another scripture that Bev shared with me, says this, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. God is working together. And even in these moments, he will bring good and comfort and healing to you as he has to Tyler. Isn't it interesting how death makes us slow down, how time stops? The world keeps going, but we take moments, and even in these moments, we take stock of life. Death confronts us with our own mortality. It makes us look at our own life. What will people say about, about us? How will we be remembered? Did I make the most of my life? What's life all about? Friends, good times, success, happiness? Why am I here? What impact am I making on the people around me? What would people say at my funeral? Where will I spend eternity? Ultimately, every one of us will put our lives in God's hand, as Tyler has done now. So why not take his hand now? Why not put your hope and trust in Jesus like Tyler did at his baptism with his mom? The Bible reminds us, as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. One thing I know we are all searching for is the way. We're looking for truth. We're searching for life, and it is found in Jesus Christ. And a God who loves you, loves you no matter what, no matter who you are or what you've done. It is in that surrender to him and to his death and resurrection on the cross that we can find true life. Choose Jesus because he has chosen you. We've come as far as we can in this earthly life with Tyler. All we can do now is release him into God's hands. I want to read to you Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, 
for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your comfort in these moments. Thank you that you do not leave us alone in times like this, but that you walk alongside us. Father, thank you for tears and for love and for these feelings of deep gratitude for the gift that has been Tyler's life. And Father, we pray in the days and the weeks ahead that you would continue to bring your comfort. And Father, we put our hope and we put our trust in you. Lord, I pray especially for a family and dear friends that will feel this loss in their lives. May you fill that space, may you fill that place with your love and comfort, comfort and with the love and comfort of friends and family who draw near and draw closer because of this. And God, we thank you for your life, your promise of eternal life, God, that you have conquered the grave, that you have conquered death, that even what seems to be the end does not have to be the end, God, but it can be a new beginning, an eternal beginning, where there is no pain, where there is no sorrow. God, where we live with the hope of your eternal presence. And so, God, for that, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is a bitter pill to swallow, but Tyler can no longer walk this journey of life with us here. He will be dearly missed. And yet, we must move forward. Because God is not finished with us yet. So as we go from here, let's hold tightly to each other's and God's strong and comforting hand. And may he bring us his peace and hope for tomorrow. Thank you, Pastor Mark. This concludes his services here at the funeral home for Tyler. On behalf of the staff and the family of Tyler, we thank you all for coming today. In a minute, I'm going to begin dismissing from the back to give you a final opportunity to pass Tyler and his family. If you're going with us to the cemetery, when you do retrieve to your vehicles, please make sure you receive a flag from our escort. Please make sure your headlights are on, your four-way flashers for the safety. May Tyler's memory live in your hearts forever. Thank you. I think um, Pastor Mark and uh, Maggie have done a great job in expressing everything, but I'd like to just share some thoughts that I have about Tyler. Um, and we're, I cannot say it better than Pastor Mark, I'm not an elegant speaker, but I know Tyler, and uh, he shared his thoughts on God, he shared how he believed, and uh, we chatted about God many times. And this is a uh, uh, grief situation for all of us. Um, we know that God's there behind us because we have faith in God. We, we know that we're all here to celebrate Tyler. We're here to sh share his memories. And we thank God for bringing him to us to have this time together. Just want to be here for each other and think about each other, think about God and remember Him. And um, thank you all for being here today. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. I know it's chilly. Thank you all for making it out to this environment with us. The moments that I've hold, I've chosen to hold within my mind are those from my childhood, when we all lived under the same roof. As a family, we enjoyed escaping Worthington, Ohio, together to vacation in exotic, all-inclusive resorts. Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Mexico were our favorite destinations to make memories together. 
We all prefer to have our toes in the sand, salt in our hair, and kisses from the sun. The ocean has a gentle way of rocking the soul, like a child held in their mother's arms. The ocean air is simply easier to breathe, and the waves seem to wash away the worries of life. Tyler was most admired by our family for his faith in God. Here and now, I would like to offer you a poem, a marriage between his happy place, the beach, and his spirituality. One night, I had a dream. I was walking along the beach with the Lord, and across the skies flashed scenes of my life. In each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One was mine, and the other was the Lord. When the last scene of my life appeared before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand, and to my surprise, I noticed that many times along the path of my life, there was only one set of footprints. And I noticed that it was at the lowest and saddest times in my life. I asked the Lord about this. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why you left my side when I needed you most. The Lord replied, my precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, where you see only one set of footprints, I was carrying you. Brother, I can see your soul in the hands of the Lord. And for this reality, you are truly blessed. <laughs> Love has no boundaries. We may exist now on different planes, but our love will be eternal. This concludes our services here at a very cold cemetery today. I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance and support. Thank the pallbearers for their help and the escort that got us here safely. Thank you. Each arrangement that was gifted to our family to make a beautiful bouquet for Tyler.